What's the word, y'all? The NBA season is wrapped up, and we're finally at my favorite part of the year. Yes, I love the bouncing of the balls and the shooting of the balls and the, the rebounding and all of that. But, like, the offseason is really what, you know what my main channel is about. <laughs> it's about building and rebuilding stuff. So the offseason part of the year is what I really gets down. If it feels weird to say that we're just a few days away from the NBA draft, because maybe I'm following the wrong people, I ain't really been hearing much buzz about this upcoming draft. Like, of course, I know some of the top guys in it. I don't watch much college ball. Like, I could name probably, will recognize the top 15 to 20 picks. But other than that, I feel like a lot of stuff ain't been going on with the NBA draft. But the things that are going crazy <laughs> is the rumors. I know. Listen, I'm going to put this right here in the world before we start talking about some of these rumors. I understand that everybody at home, writers and stuff, we are bored. So rumors are going to come out in the world and 90% of them aren't going to be true. The players that they are saying is going to request a trade or are available for a trade probably aren't. But I'm okay to talk about it, ladies and gentlemen. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be fun. Like, listen, what is this, the fourth, third year in a row where people are like, hey, Bradley Beal, it's th this, this is going to be the year. They're going to do it. And like this morning, it came out that Bradley Beal was expected to request a trade. And as cool as it is to react to that or overreact to that, they said the same thing about, about Damian Lillard last week. Literally last week, they said Damian Lillard's going to go to the podium and request a trade. What did he do? He didn't officially request a trade. He just said, hey, I want my front office to make some changes. And then then we might we might have a conversation. But, like, they didn't do anything. So it would be cool for me to come up here and be like, hey, send me Bradley Beal trade packages. We know most likely it won't happen. But listen, a rumor could be true. Like I said, there's 10% of these rumors that might end up being true. But this feels like a 90%er. Especially when they say Boston, Golden State, Miami, and Philly are the teams he is interested in joining. And we talked about this on my podcast. That is the Through the Wire podcast. You should, you should go look that up on YouTube and go subscribe. We're close to 50,000 subscribers on our channel. That's all I'm really saying. We talked about it. And look, Boston, ooh. Jason Tatum and him are in the Olympics, and they grew up together, basically. Literally, um, the report came out, and Jason Tatum commented on an Instagram thing with the Clover, basically saying, like, hey, we want we want Bradley Beal. Of course, every team should want Bradley Beal. So, yeah, um, he maybe he's getting recruited from Jason Tatum in the Olympics. The Golden State Warriors, ooh, they got a good trade pack with James Wiseman, 14-7. Wiggins and Draymond Green is playing with him right now. He might be in Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal dropped out of the Olympics. I forgot about that. He literally dropped out of the Olympics. But they did have, like, a couple weeks together. Let's say that. I'm um, in Miami. Bam Adebayo was on that team. So, like, for a little bit, he was in a locker room in the hotels in Vegas. They may have been having some fun in Vegas. You never really know. And he was like, man, I actually wouldn't mind wanting to play with this. But most likely it's Cap. I low-key just forgot that Bradley Beal dropped out of the Olympics because he didn't want to get the shot. Just get the shot, people. Anyway, another thing that came out, Pascal Siakam is considered available for trade by sources around the league, per Jack L. Fli Flish Flisher, who writes for Bleach Report. I work for Bleach Report, so I'm not going to discredit the man. But, hey, listen, what does this mean? What, in, a, in what world, and I'm not saying it's impossible, but, like, I'm, I'm literally posing a question to y'all in the comment section. If Pascal Siakam is considered available, for what? Like, what would you expect the Toronto Raptors to be thinking to get in return for Pascal Siakam? What direction are they trying to go with their organization by trading Pascal Siakam? Especially after this year where Pascal Siakam was the worst he had been in a few years. Now, I'm on record with saying I believe that Pascal will bounce back next season. He's going to be great again. All-star caliber player. Maybe not make the all-star game, but going to be in the conversations. Just remember, a couple years ago, he was all NBA's second team, all right? I ain't off that hill. Pascal is still a dude. But if they're trading him away, what are they looking to get in return? Think about their team right now. We, we, I think it's official, not official, but we all believe that Cal Lowry's probably going to move on to his next team. We're going to talk about that in a second. But you got Freddie, you got OG Ananobi, you have Pascal, and you have the fourth overall pick. That seems like a team to me that's going to be decent enough to compete for a playoff spot. And with Pascal, he's not considered a young player in the NBA right now because he was a late bloomer, but he's young in NBA years enough where he can be two and three years down the line. That fourth overall pick guy, probably Jalen Suggs is what I'm hearing. He's going to be progressing, and just like that, the Toronto Raptors are back to a team where they were competing for a championship. And what happened last time they were competing for a championship? They made a blockbuster trade to turn that competed for a championship to a championship team. 
It feels weird to say that Pascal Siakam is going to be available in trades because if you're trading Pascal away, you're not getting the guy that's going to come in and help the team right now. So that would mean you're going towards a rebuild. And I believe that you still have pieces in Toronto that's good enough to be a playoff team. Last year is nothing you should overreact to if you're a Toronto Raptors fan or the Toronto Raptors front office. And their front office is very, very smart. They don't seem like the type that's going to be overreactive for a year where you dealt with a lot of injuries and you were 100,000 miles away from your home city. That's an exaggeration, but you understand what I'm saying. You didn't really get to you didn't play at home at, home at all. It's, we just found out the Toronto Blue Jays are finally going to get back at home. So this is going to be a season where you're going to be in front of your home crowd again, back towards family and all of that, and I expect them to be solid. I will be, if there was anything to report for the Toronto Raptors, I wouldn't be surprised if they were thinking about using their fourth overall pick to potentially make a trade to get better for now. But I would want them to draft Jalen Suggs because I think that's, I think that would be a good fit. Jalen Suggs, Fred Van Vliet, another backcourt that's going to be um, pretty good for years to come. The other rumor, <laughs> I don't even know why I'm mentioning this. I'm basically going on the NBA Central and just reading their tweets. That's that's what I do with these rumor videos. Leangelo Ball expected to sign with the Hornets. Shout out to the Ball brothers. Because if, if there's one thing that you could say about them, they're, they're really a brotherhood where they're going to try to get their brother a job. Like if Leangelo Ball name was Leangelo Wilson or Leangelo Downs, he probably doesn't get a third shot or fourth shot at the NBA. But since LaMelo is a potential superstar in the making, LaMelo just hit up, who, who is it? Mitch Kupchak say, hey, let my brother play summer league. What is Mitch Kupchak going to say? No. Absolutely not. They're going to get his man a job. So Liazlo gets another appearance, another opportunity. I think the last time he played in the NBA setting was with the OKC Blue, if I'm not mistaken, or something like that. Um, and I hope he does well. You know what I'm saying? I'm rooting for anybody to have their dreams come true. Oh, another thing d dealing with the Toronto Raptors. Um, Toronto is another team considered to, show ex to express some interest in Ben Simmons. I ain't got nowhere to go with that one. I'm just reading it out there. And that's according to... That's according to the Stein line, which is Mark Stein, Stein, uh, like a, a legitimately credible guy with 1.4 million followers. I did not know he had that much clout on Twitter. His tweets, you can, you can really, listen, this is what I always tell people. And this goes to the world of YouTube. This goes to the world of Instagram, Twitter. It don't really matter the amount of followers you have. It's a, it's about the interaction on your tweets now, I understand he's a columnist, so I think more for him, he don't really care about the interaction on his tweets, his interaction on his articles. But um, 1.4 million followers, 70 likes on it. It, it don't matter. I, I trust his, I trust him as a source is all that really matters right now. Oh, uh, you remember when Amin El Hassan said some dumb stuff about Monty Williams walking to the to the locker room for the Bucs and said he just wanted the eyes all on him. I love that Giannis shut that down immediately. I know that's unrelated to rumors and stuff, but shout out to Giannis. Just a class act. Everything, every single video I have seen from Giannis Antetokounmpo, not just in the finals, but in the history of Giannis Antetokounmpo makes him the most likable guy. I found an old video of myself. It's on this channel, but you'll never see it because it's a private video. Of me talking about Giannis buying a smoothie i made a 10 minute video about Giannis buying a smoothie after he signed a contract like four or five years ago what what is the relevancy of that it's it's not super relevant but i'm just saying like Giannis is a cool kid he's a cool guy another mark stein report it is no longer a safe assumption that Kawhi leonard is staying with the clippers let all of the chaos come true the Mavericks, Knicks, and Heat are expected to show interest. I said on my podcast, that list should be way longer than just those three teams. If if there's any hope that you can get Kawhi Leonard, you should call his phone. You never really know. And yes, he'll probably be out for majority of next season, but who cares? It's Kawhi Leonard. He'll come back in, a, in next season and help you compete for a championship. At least compete for a championship. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of this stems from, similar to what happened with the San Antonio Spurs, where like they, they misdiagnosed his injury. The same thing how it happened with the Clippers this year. So obviously, he don't really like that too much. Um, so him switching teams would definitely be weird considering everything that's happened with the Clippers and all. But it's a possibility. Now, that is that is um, Kawhi, Bradley Beal, Ben Simmons, Pascal Siakam, these are four star, Liangelo, no, this, these are four star players that just in the last two days are rumored to be on the move. Like I said, take it with a grain of salt. These are all rumors. But out of these four, maybe one 
maybe one of them gets moved and maybe literally zero of them. Maybe zero. And the Lakers are all in the news. That's what we're going to end it today. The Lakers are all in the news. Um, Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan might be willing to take pay cuts to deal with the Lakers. Spencer Dinwiddie is interested in the Lakers. Chris Paul is amongst free agents that are on the short list for the Lakers. Yeah. The Lakers are always going to end up re-upping and getting better. It's it's the LA way, especially with LeBron being there. Out of those four players that we mentioned, not many of them actually fit into the Lakers. But I, what I would say is with a guy like LeBron, I don't know if it really matters. Especially with him being going on 37 in this upcoming season. You signing DeMar DeRozan and Kyle Lowry on pay cuts would be magnificent. Even though they might not fit exactly with what LeBron James is used to having in teammates. I wouldn't give a damn. I wouldn't care. More talent for LeBron to rest up and get ready for the playoffs. Yeah, the spacer will be kind of suspect with DeMar DeRozan, um, Anthony Davis, and LeBron on the court together. For sure. But if anybody will figure it out. It'll be, it'll be a LeBron-led team. Yeah, it'll be a LeBron-led team. Anyway, it's it, it's written on the wall that Kyle Kuzma probably won't be there for next season for the Lakers. So that's a trade piece for them. Russell Westbrook has also been linked to the Lakers, according to some reports. And that will be like a sign and trade with Dennis um, Dennis Schroeder, a sign and trade with Montrez Harrell, and throwing in Kyle Kuzma for Russell Westbrook. And if that trade happens on draft night, then just expect the Bradley Beal trade to happen shortly after. Because if you're going to split those two, don't don't keep one of them around for them to be miserable and playing on a team that's going to maybe make the playoffs. I think Washington's rebuild could be very, very interesting depending on what you could you could get for Bradley Beal. And what you could get for Russell Westbrook may not be nearly as much, but it might be something. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Rumors are, are stupid, but they definitely fun.